Father God, you know I have to have your help. You know that I need it with all my heart. And I ask you now, Lord, this message you gave to me, that you inspired me with, help me to give it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> My custom, whatever, I get up early, always have. So up there I would get up early and I would sit in the living room and read. And as I was reading about uh, the scripture that I'm going to be giving here in a moment, it, I, I said, that's my next message. I didn't realize I was going to be preaching as soon as I got home. Daredevils. Dare the devil. Dare him. Say, come on, man. I want to prove to you in Jesus' name that my God can handle everything that you may throw at me. Now, if you're defeated, then you just let him win. I said, if you're defeated, you just let him win. He ain't going to win in my life. I want to read something to you that I come across by way of beginning today. It said, we are commissioned Excuse me, we're not commissioned to hold the fort until Jesus returns. When I read that, I started chuckling to myself. I can remember growing up in church, and, and I don't see one around here close by. Here's one over here. I'm going to show you something. We just do this. Boy, we thought we were spiritual. Pretend this is a handkerchief in your pocket, Okay. You know, one filled with boogers and snot, you know? You ever seen one like that, you know? Yeah, you don't carry it around just to wipe your head. You know what I mean? And so, they'd come up, they'd send them out, let's sing, hold the fort! Boy, that was a, boy, that was a dim boom banger. Man, people get that. Now then, you got to get your handkerchief out, they'd say, and wave it. So you get that nasty old handkerchief out there, and you go, hold the fort! For I am coming. <laughs> Boy, we thought we were spiritual. He didn't commission us to hold the fort. We're not living in the days that they build forts across the country. And everybody lived inside that fort for fear somebody else was going to hurt them. He commanded us to invade enemy territory and reclaim it for righteousness. Amen. Jesus didn't suffer a, beautiful, a brutal death on the cross just to keep us safe and sound. The goal was to make us dangerous. He died to make us daredevils. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. I like that. He died to make us daredevils. Turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 18. Chapter 6, verse 18. It says something like this. Maybe not word for word in your particular translation, but here's what it says. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. I'm going to read it again. A strong wind was blowing. And the waters grew rough. Now then, let me translate that. 
There's some strong winds blowing in your life. And the waters look rough. But I'm going to show you this morning, there's somebody walking on that water that's going to get in your boat and carry you through the crisis if you'll get him in there. You know why he don't get in your boat? We hold him off. So that's okay, God. I don't need you right now, but next week I might. So just stay right close by there. And when I need you, I'll call you. Listen to me. You need to put him in your boat and keep him there 24-7. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the conditions of this particular verse here. On the Sea of Galilee, because of its location, I've been there, seen it, been on it. The wind can come down through the Jordan Valley, and the waves in that small sea can rise anywhere from 5 to 20 feet tall. This is an enclosed sea now. And in your life, right now, they may look like they're 20 feet tall. Or they may only be 5 feet tall. And the wind may be blowing. I don't know if you've ever been in a real windstorm. Man, I've been in a windstorm so bad you couldn't even see in front of yourself, hardly. But I got news for you. If you're in a windstorm, spiritually speaking, and the waves are coming high, I want you to know something. There's somebody that will get in the boat with you and walk with you and talk with you and fellowship with you all your life if you let him. Amen. You may be facing some crisis. I don't know what you're facing. I know what I face. But you know what? Then a wave is going to swamp. No wave is going to swamp me. Because I've got somebody in the boat with me. And he's got number one priority in my life. When Susie and I got married, she can remember very distinctly. I said one thing to her. I said, you'll always be number one after God. Yeah. I don't know any other way to go. In, my, in our finances, if we're blessed, tithe comes out of it. If we're in a crisis, we go to him. If we're gigantically blessed or small blessed, we give all the glory to him. Because he's number one. He's in our boat. He's watching us. He's caring for us. He's keeping the waves from swamping us. Do we have the waves? Oh, yeah, we've got the waves. A whole bunch of them. Yeah, we do. If you walk in public life, you're going to have some waves. Look like they're going to overwhelm you. If you have children, you're going to have some waves. If you're by yourself, you're going to have some waves. But I got news for you. Keep him in the boat. And you can make the wave. Sea of Galilee. It's seven and a half miles wide. Now this is important. It is 17 miles long. And at the deepest point, it's 157 feet deep. Now, picture that. I don't know how big Hag Lake is. But picture Hag Lake in your mind for a moment. And what if a wind came down that canyon and you're in a boat now, <laughs> the Bible says they had gotten in a boat and they had only rowed about three and a half feet away from the shore. And all of a sudden, these gigantic waves, were they five feet, were they 20 feet? I don't know. But they were big. They were big to those guys and they were experienced fishermen. Seven.
17 miles long. So they were three and a half feet, or three, excuse me, three and a half miles away from the shore. So they weren't even halfway across. So we got to see seven and a half feet wide, or miles, excuse me, and 17 miles long, and all of a sudden there's a storm. Now, they were there in search of Jesus. He had left them, and so they were going over the other side, perhaps to meet him. So maybe they're walking in obedience or whatever. But they had been with him. They knew about it. In fact, in John 6, verses 1 through 13, they had witnessed a miracle second to none. They had witnessed over 5,000 people fed <laughs> from two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, you imagine, these are not gigantic loaves as we know them, because it's a little boy's lunch. So, it would be easy to understand if we said he had five little biscuits and two sardines. That'd be about right. That's not a, lot, that's not a very big lunch. And Jesus says to Philip, you know, these folks have been with us, I want you to feed them. Philip said, Lord... What are we going to do? He said it would take over a month's wages to raise enough money to buy the food to feed over this 5,000 people. <laughs> but there's always one that hangs on. There's always one that will believe God for the impossible. And one of them spoke up and said, you know what I have found? I've looked all around and nobody brought their, their no picnic lunches, no nothing. I looked all around and, I, and there's a little guy here. He's got five loaves and two fish. Now that isn't much, he said. Jesus said, that's plenty. Whoa, that's plenty. When the Lord told me to go to, to Alaska and Beaver, Alaska, I had $60 a month coming in. Sixty dollars a month. That was plenty. When they got through, after Jesus began to bless it and give it out. Now they'd been witnessed, they'd seen this. These same Twelve guys in his boat, rowing like crazy, going across, and the storm comes up, and they're all nervous about it. They had just witnessed 5,000 plus fed from a boy's lunch, because they saw 12 baskets left over. Amazing. He said, I don't believe it. I do, because it's in this book. And man, if it's in this book, I believe it. Lock, stock, and barrel. You know why I believe it? I've seen him do some of the same stuff in my life. I've seen him do some of the same stuff. You've probably heard her story. She was a single mother raising three children. Came back from vacation, a teacher in Barrel. And the Lord spoke to her and said, there's a family here. I want you to give them $500. She said, I rebuke you. She didn't say it exactly like that. But boy, I'm telling you what. Can you imagine? Now, she, it, she hadn't got her, it's not fall time yet. She hadn't got her check. So this is the last of her money to last till in the first check in the fall time. Hello, come on now. And the Lord says, why don't you give $500 to those people over there? Huh. Well, I didn't know. She did. And you know what? The Lord took care of her too. Whew. They're in the middle of the sea. Three and a half miles out. It's time for a miracle. 
when you're three and a half miles out and you can't see the shore, it's time for a miracle. Hello? When you've prayed and prayed and read and read, it's time for a miracle. Get ready for a miracle. I discovered when I began to read about this, did you know that the crew that discovered America was Christopher Columbus, and his crew had never been until they took off with him over 300 miles from the shore. They weren't seamen. Did you know that when I took off to do what he told me to do, I had never done it before in my life. I can remember a landing in Barrow the last time we were there. I was there, and they said, we want to build a new building, Pastor. And I said, fine, let's do it. I never built one in my life. Especially like they knew it up there with piling in the ground and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know anything about that. I was three and a half miles out in the ocean. Hello. The waves were coming, man. They were expecting Pastor to come up with some miracles. <laughs> Pastor didn't have any miracles. But Pastor knew somebody that did have some miracles. And I can tell you, I can tell you, miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle took place. I left the shore, and I was depending totally upon him. <laughs> Man, it's time for a miracle. The waves are rolling, rocking. The boat, they're scared to death. And Jesus appears. Did you ever notice something about Jesus? <laughs> he preached most of his life to a congregation of 12. Oh, he had his big times when the crowds came and healed the sick and they would fall. But you know what? His big, his most of his ministry was at night, off the way to 12. There he's, it's amazing. Jesus appears walking on the one. And you know what? He wasn't interested in publicity. Not at all. He, he, he didn't give his name was in. Jesus of Nazareth was here. That wasn't important to him. He said, I came to do the will of my father. You do the will of the father. And I have news for you. They may not publish your name on the billboard, but you will be known. <laughs> we leave that one there. He was the master daredevil. Forty days and nights he fasted, and the devil appeared. And who won? Jesus did. He came across a young man that was bound by 6,000 demons. He said, what's your name? He says, Legion. Why was it Legion? Because he had, was, they said that because 6,000 in him, that's the size of an army in that day. Jesus came against 6,000 demons. <laughs> there's one part of Jesus that people don't talk a lot about. They talk about his mercy and his love and all that. Did you know that he was the most fearless individual that ever walked the planet? I like that. The most fearless person that ever walked the planet. I would have loved to see in the eyes of the money changers when he walked in and said, My house should be called a house of prayer, not a 
Get out of here, you money changers. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have been on the, on the hillside when he said to the disciples, feed these folks, man. And he just began to, he just began to pass it out. How long would it take to feed over 5,000 people? The fearlessness of this man is the most overlooked part of his personality. I read someplace that you're born with two fears. Everything else is learned. I think it's time to unlearn. You're born with the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. And every other fear you have is learned. Well, I say it's time to unlearn some of the fears that we have when the enemy comes at us and we get all nervous and say, what am I going to do? Oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. He's begging me. You don't have to be afraid of anything because you've got Jesus in the boat. Look at verse 20 and 21 of the sixth chapter. We're going to read that one. We need to read that. Here's what he says. Now, now we've seen the picture. Three and a half miles out. Looks like the waves are going to swamp them. These are experienced people. They knew all about boating. They knew all about fishing. They knew all about the Sea of Galilee. They lived on the sea. Now they're afraid. Because the reason I know they're afraid because of what Jesus said to them. Verse 20. He said, he called out to them. In fact, verse 19 says, they were terrified. Terrified. So it must have been a storm like they'd never seen before. I've seen a few of those. Uh, I'll never, ever, ever forget in fact, Regner, when he was here, we were talking about it. The very first person the Lord called upon us to pray deliverance for. Young, just a small lady. And her husband brought her to us to pray for her. He said, man, she needs help. So I said to this young lady, I said, in Jesus' name, Satan, you're going to come out of her. And the most hoarse voice said, no, I won't. And I'm going to tell you at that point, I was ready to bail out of the boat. I was scared beyond words. But instantly I realized who was in the room with us. And I said, in Jesus' name, yes, you will. She left delivered. Was it Pastor? Was it Regner? Was it the other? Was it her husband? No. It was Jesus in the boat. Man, when he's there, don't have to worry. All right, verse 20. Here we go. I'll get to it. Don't be afraid. I am here. Hallelujah. I am here. Then, verse 21, they were eager to let him in the boat, and immediately they arrived at their destination. Now get that. They're three and a half miles out. It's 17 miles, so they're only a parcel away, and immediately when he got in there, they were there. You talk about a jet propelled. A jet boat, man. Woo! Woo! They're there. You know why? The daredevil dared defy and come against the sea, the wind, Satan, and whoever else was in the problem. Hallelujah. And I want to say this to you. Let him in. Don't hold off. If you're watching at home, I pray you'll let Jesus get in your boat. I, I pray that if you're struggling with something, you'll let Jesus take care of it. Quit fighting it. You can't win. But he can. 
He can. Hallelujah. He proved it over and over. I believe it. I trust in it. Hallelujah. The waves will not overtake you. Let him stay in the boat. Now, I want to close with this. The waves are going to come. If you think that he saved you and brought and died on the cross so that you can have a, oh, wow, everything's so beautiful. I'll never have any more problems. Not, well, somebody lied to you. Somebody sure got in your and whispered in your ear. You know what? I, I, I found the perfect wife. <laughs> I found the perfect husband. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I'm sure glad you did. <laughs> Hallelujah. So did I. But did you know what? She found the perfect husband. Yeah. But every now and then, a flaw comes up. Yeah. A little hidden wave that she didn't know about. Hello. Some little, something might happen. And you know, and, and, and it's you. Oh, I won't go there. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about that one. But if Jesus is in the morning, in the home, you can come through it. Hallelujah. You can make it on through. Just keep rowing. Just keep rowing. Hallelujah. And boy, about that time, you're at the other side, and you didn't realize how quickly you got there. Hello. Making up is fun. Lord, help us in Jesus' name. Father, you've given this to me. I've given it to the people. Those watching at home, in Jesus' name. And Lord, it's all up to you now. I have been obedient. I didn't let anything stop me. Now it's all up to you. You're in charge. You're here. And I pray that you'll get in the driver's seat for those that are watching, as well as those that are here listening. And help us, Lord, to truly be willing to raise our hands and say, I surrender it all to you. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. One more time. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. Father, one last prayer I pray to you in behalf of everyone watching or listening here. May we have the courage. Fill us with that fearlessness of Jesus to truly surrender it in Jesus' name. And all the glory goes to you. Hallelujah.